Hello everybody, Bubbles Zest here and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video I want to talk a little bit about the Soviet Union. Specifically, I want to talk about the right opposition Soviet coup and why I don't think you need to do it. I see so many people online commenting, Oh, I failed the coup, Bukharin got purged, Rykov got purged, I got locked out of the focus tree. And I always think, why did you even do the coup in the first place? But there's no point in me just constantly commenting why I think the coup is a bad idea. I should show you why the coup is a bad idea. So let's begin, shall we? There we go, we've entered right opposition. For this example, I'm going to be rushing the start of the civil war as soon as I can, so we're going to do the need for policy changes to send the party in coup d'etat. Um, our base will be in our Angelisk, and I'm only going to expand into two states, Unalets and Volgada. And that's pretty much all I will need. So, first benefit of doing this is that we minimise who Stalin will likely purge, because he has very little opportunity to do many purges. In fact, doing this so quickly means he probably won't even do the Trial of the Zenonites. Funnily enough, Bukharin gets arrested in this instance, so I have to increase paranoia to keep him alive. One benefit of the coup you might be thinking is, Ah, but Bubbles, the coup means you get to keep the entire Soviet stockpile and you don't lose it. Well, in this game you can easily secure your control of the stockpile. Let me show you how. Let's go into Division Designer, Create Empty, and create one battalion of artillery. I already found out the 5 XP throughout this. And change all the units that we can over to that templates. And in the meanwhile, we're going to disband the Soviet Air Force as well. So we just wait till the next day. Oh, and what do you know? We have 80k guns in stockpile. Let's just delete this production line as well. So Stalin has minimal weapons. And go over to either Spain and send them everything that we can. Weapons, tanks, airplanes, so on. I dismantled the Soviet tank brigades earlier, so I could also have the maximum stockpile of tanks. And with this, that will preserve the entire stockpile for ourselves, not for Stalin. Just need to wait those little few days more and we will begin. Here's our coup d'etat. Let's do Rykov. I think he's a better leader than Bukharin anyway. More XP and less consumer goods, always are pretty useful. And let's get our, all of our stockpile back. Cancel. There we go. It's now ours. Now let's prepare to win this as soon as possible. Merge everyone up and we'll change them all over to cavalry. Why cavalry? Because horse runs fast. <laughs> uh, at least we've got Bluka, the logistics wizard. Pretty good. Now let's just go on the front line and prepare to run all the way to somewhere like Baku. So these are the generals. We've got Primakov, Chukov, Rezrin. Not bad. We're definitely going to need it many more units to pad out our front line so let's train some more cavalry but at this point we're already ready to go and our stockpile well what do you know it's absolutely huge so that benefit the coup had no nope, we ensured our control of that pretty simply if i don't say so myself and now we'll just get rid of stalin as soon as we get all because right now these units are still technically artillery units and um, what do you know these artillery units as usual, just completely melt and we could just keep pushing them away. Ah yes, my favourite things. The NKVD units, the literal only things that can stop us. But oh well, there's only so many of them. And there's much more of us. Oh, and we have a brain. Accidentally re-lost Moscow, but whatever. That resulted in another encirclement for us. There we go. We just need to keep pushing down now. Oh, the first 16 of the cavalry is here. Very good. We are already pretty much completely overwhelming the line. And we are in Stalingrad before the end of October. Let's continue on. Navy defections, eh? Okay. Not what I really had in mind, to be honest, but whatever. We now have 104 units. Never mind. We now have 105 units. And Stalin has 3 to 7, so yeah. <laughs> He's been collapsed. It's over when we take the next victory point, so where is it? Oh no, it's already happened. And victory! 16th of November 1936. That was nice and quick. Now, I can already see what you're thinking. But Bubbles, you lost so many generals, and you don't have so many advisors unlocked. You only really have Tomsky, Bukharin... And I'll say this, there is no general, there is no advisor in this game that will make or break a run. There will not be any deciding factor whether or not you'll be able to defeat Germany, Britain, Japan, so on. Yeah, they're useful and important, but they won't be the thing that makes you lose, win, 
Now, we're going to do the coup next, but keep this in mind, I've managed to finish this by 16th of November 1936. And just getting to the ability to do the coup takes 280 days. At this point, I can just rebuild, be prepared, I could even do gun scams with Tanatuba or something if I was really desperate for extra equipment. But now, time to do the coup. Right, so just like last time, we'll be doing this as quickly as I can. So we'll do infiltrate the NKVD, policy changes, organize uprisings, clandestine cells, undermine Stalin's authority, and plan for the coup. Now, this obviously runs the risk of increasing Stalin's paranoia quite a lot. But, oh well. Don't really have much of a choice. I'm not going to set up a secret base. I don't actually see the need for one today. Because obviously the whole idea of doing this is that we don't have to fight. The only reason that you would do infiltrating the NKVD in a run like this, though, is oh, to increase your chances of blowing Stalin's head off. If you are absolutely desperate to keep the right opposition leaders alive, obviously something like infiltrating the left would be useful for that. Because obviously it does exactly what it says. It, it means Stalin will focus on them. There is a benefit here related to Spain. You can send volunteers to them and not be interrupted. So you could ensure the victory for the Republicans a lot smoother than what you would be able to do if you rushed a civil war like I did. So in this instance, I'm going to help the Republicans with air volunteers. I'm going to allow Stalin to do the trial of the Xenonites. The main reason for this is it slows him down to the block of Dreitz and Trotskyites, the trial that gets rid of Bukharin and Rykov, I believe. So the later he does that, the sooner we can do the coup. You could still do something like divert attention towards the military after he's done it, though. For events like this, we probably need to decrease Stalin's paranoia. Unfortunately, because I just got an elusive gentleman, but whatever. The only thing we truly need political power is if we want to keep Yagoda alive. But we can let Yagoda be purged, and that'd be fine, but Yezov we do need to keep alive at all costs. Because if Beria gets in power, obviously we can't persuade him. Looks like we've done well with the first Great Purge, because it will just go right back down to zero. So, I guess that works for us. Doing undermine Stalin's authority as late as we can is useful. If we can limit his paranoia gain, that's why. But unfortunately, we have to do it, and so, one extra paranoia a week. It is now also November 16th, so keep in mind, at this point, in the previous run, I have already finished. So, any day after this point, it's just extra time that we're losing. Now, time to plan for the coup. There we go, this will mean our paranoia is only 5%, and now let's get Yagoda on board. And who's been arrested? Funnily enough, it's Rykov! You know what, I saved Bukharin last time, so we're going to save Rykov this time. Right, let's get rid of him, shall we? Now, keep this in mind. It says 80%, and that's true, but this can still fail. And if it this fails, oh, that's not good. It, if it fails, it's an automatic start, and in this instance, I can't start by changing my units over to artillery divisions, I don't have the XP for it. So basically, we have to get lucky. Well, that's lucky, in this instance, he did go. And here's Beria himself, the paranoid man, more like the coward of the Soviet Union, I think. And here we are. You know what, since I saved them yet again, it'll be Rykov who leads us. There we go. 18th of August 1937, and we have done it. So, in the first run, it took me until November 1936 to get in power. In this run, it took until August 1937. That's nearly half a year. In fact, it's over half a year, actually. So, I still am not convinced the coup is not is useful in any way. I'll concede that getting the air doctrines was quite useful. I managed to get five of them, plus independent air force spirit, which is alright. But, again... Is it really all that? I don't think so. Let's have a look at our stockpile. I'll add 8,000 guns to be generous, because I sent quite a few Lend Leases to Spain, so 20,000. Okay, that's alright, but again, I got 80,000 by just changing my army over, sending it to Spain, and then cancelling it. I will note, though, that overall we had 116,000 guns, which is clearly more than the 80,000 we had in the Civil War run, but keep in mind we're also 9 months further in, in in-game time, and for the Civil War run I could have done things like Lend-Lease or Ultimated of the Baltic States to even that a little bit. I will concede, though, in this run we had more production efficiency, which is definitely useful, but then again, this is only 1936 and 1937, so any lost efficiency we definitely could have rebuilt. 
Okay, sure, we managed to keep almost all of our generals, since only one or two of them actually got purged. Fair enough, if you're a massive fan of someone like Chukachevsky, sure, I can see the benefit in that. But again, like I said, is Chukachevsky really going to be the, the factor that means you defeat Germany? No. So, not really something I see as in the coup's favour. I'm just struggling to see of a reason why you would do the coup. Of course, I can see reasons for, like, roleplay games, sure, if you want to do a roleplay game, sure, I can see that being quite fun. But for actually playing the game for things like achievements, or trying to take Germany, the Allies, or so on, I don't see why you would ever do the coup. Do you leave any comments below if you do see any benefits that I don't, because I'm sure there is many a reason why you'd want to do it. Of course, if I was actually going to do something like this in a real run, I would do military support for the Civil War so I could increase how many generals I have. Rushing the Civil War like that is not something I would generally do, but it does have its perks. The right opposition tree is fun. Things like the new economic policy are quite strong, and I think this whole tree is actually kind of underrated, because most people have just overlooked it for something like Trotsky, the monarchist path, or even Stalin. But there is quite a lot here. What I don't recommend you do is the coup. That's the long and short of it. I thank you for watching, I do hope you enjoyed it. Leave any suggestions in the comments below for future videos, I'm always looking for new video ideas. This is a little different for me, just talking mechanics of Hearts of Iron 4. That's not really something I do too often, but this is pretty enjoyable for me to do. So until next time everybody, until we meet again from Bubbles Zest here, good bye.